Hello, in this video you can witness the satisfying nature of the golden open paints and how you can create an effortless, flawless, a la prima landscape painting for beginners. Why not? I start by mixing my palette colors, which in this case they are warm colors, as the rocks in this canyon are of an orange, rusty hue. This landscape set from Golden Open contains a variety of colors that are perfect for this painting, such as manganese blue hue and white for the sky, and you're welcome to add some of the ultramarine blue if you want to give the sky a cooler look. The alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue with a touch of black and white are the color for the sides of the distant mountains that are in the shadow. And the rest of the palette colors are a variation of different amounts of alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, cadmium red light, yellow ochre, white and black. I started mixing the colors for the distant layer which are full of atmosphere. The number one rule of painting a landscape is the difference in saturation of the background and foreground elements. The further away you look, the more desaturated, that is, faded and grayed out the things you see. The far objects seem to blend in the sky sometimes, so there is a blue hue added to whatever color the landscape has, in this case orangey red. So the far away rocks are darker, have a purple hue instead of red, and there is less contrast. As we approach the foreground, we add more cadmium red to the mix, as cadmium red is a warmer red as opposed to the alizarin crimson that dominates the distant structures. The closer to us we get, things also start to shift to yellow as well. We add more ochre to the mix. Here you see me mixing the colors by the layers of ground, background, mid-ground and foreground. Each layer has a dark for the shadow, a true color for the objects that are in the light, and their highlights. From these colors you can add white, black or crimson to paint different hues of rocks, highlights or shadows. You can take a screenshot of the complete palette so you can mix your own paints for a landscape painting like this. This is an 11 by 14 inch canvas board. It's a pretty small canvas and I generally start by making a really quick sketch of the composition to give some strong bones to the structure of the painting. I do so with the sky color, a mix of the manganese blue and the white, but you can sketch with whatever color you want, just use a light hand. When painting a landscape, it is recommended that you start at the top and continue down. This way, if you drip, you can easily cover your mistakes as you go down. Unless you work from imagination, when painting from a reference photo, refer to it as often as you can. In fact, you should spend a few minutes just examining it before you start painting, to get familiarized with the shapes and relationship between them, contrast, color variations and the overall composition and flow of the piece. When painting the sky, I keep in mind the flow and movement of the clouds. And at first, I am only blocking in the cloudless sky portions, observing that the upper right corner of the sky is the darkest. I add more manganese blue to my light blue mixture for that corner. If you want your sky to have more of a cooler color, you can add some ultramarine blue to your manganese blue. That will shift it from the greenish blue to more purpley blue. Here I'm just using manganese blue. Generally, the bottom part of the sky is lighter, so add more white to the bottom and then blend it with the rest of the sky. Then I add more white to block in the clouds and then I blend them very softly with the rest of the sky. Then grab more white and very softly create the wisps and strands of transparent clouds. Mm -hmm. 
Eventually, I added a touch of alizarin crimson to the white to create a very subtle suggestion of sunshine to the scene. These golden open paints are amazing for blending and they stay wet so much longer. So you can create these wispy blended cloud effects much easier than it would be with regular acrylics, which would dry before you get the chance to switch colors. The golden open paints feel more like an oil paint in that regard, and that can be a hindrance as much as a help in some cases. That is to say, don't overblend them. It is good to have some texture and contrast. If you blend your clouds too much, you risk having a homogeneous bluish sky instead of a well-defined happy little clouds on a cool blue sky. The next part is blocking in the distant rocks, starting with the shadowy parts. I like to cover the entire dark values and then go over and add some details to that. The color here is the dark alizarin crimson ultramarine blue combo to which I added some extra white and black to tone down the color a bit as they were too vibrant to be in the distance. You can adjust colors at any point if you think that they are too light or dark or vibrant. At this point, don't worry too much about little details. You can add them later. Just focus on having the size and the relationships between the shapes correctly. After blocking in the shadow, block in the facets of the mountains that are in the light with the light brick color. Just fill in the other sides of the mountains that are in the light. Pay attention to slight variations in the rock color as the lower layers have a slightly more violet hue. Just add some alizarin crimson to the mix. After blocking in the solid colors, it's time to add some details. Details to the shadow colors, which are made from a slightly lighter and warmer color than the shadow. And then highlights on the light sides, which are a fleshy color. And then a more light and yellow fleshy color for certain layers of the rock. Just look at your reference photo constantly. And when you mix your colors, just add small increments at a time to achieve your desired color. Remember that acrylic paint dries slightly darker than when it's wet, so if you can barely see the highlight on top of a color, then you should lighten it a bit. After you block in the light side, you can go back and add more dark back in. There are many little details in this picture, and even though we're going for a realistic landscape, it is a cross between real and an impression. If you would want to make this truly realistic, it follows the same basic principles, just 50 more hours of work. Keep in mind, this is an a la prima painting, which means that it was painted in one sitting. It's nearly impossible to paint a realistic painting in four hours, but not impossible to make it look good and recognizable from a couple of feet away, which is the proper way to view any good art. Take your time to add little details, as they make all the difference between a painting that looks as though a four-year-old did it and a masterpiece. Don't worry too much if in the beginning your painting still looks like a four-year-old did it. There are some really talented four-year-olds out there, and maybe you're like them. Add the light highlights on the sides that are in the light, observing that the upper layer of the rocks have a more bleached appearance, so just add more white, yellow ochre, and the smallest touch of ultramarine blue to the light fleshy pink color that you mixed earlier. The smallest details are added with a small liner brush, loaded with paint, lightly touching the paint on top of the previous paint, taking care that they don't blend. You're simply laying the highlights on top.
But there is another method to create the highlights than using a paintbrush, and that is to use a palette knife. This painting was made at home in preparation for the acrylic painting course that I am teaching at the studio, and I was playing around with different methods to achieve a similar result. The palette knife was indeed a faster method of putting in the lighter patterns of rock, albeit a bit more random and difficult to predict what shapes you're creating. In a way, this creates a more organic look, as we humans tend to organize things a bit too much and sometimes this makes a painting look too uniform and repetitive. The palette knife technique does take a while to master and the trick is to not load it too much and again a light hand is key in letting the paint break and not pushing the paint in the previous layers. This second time you can see that I could have desaturated the highlight color in the shadow more, but I didn't out of laziness. I can always go back and change, improve it anytime if I so wish. Then just continue painting the lower layers using your palette colors that match the reference photo best. Fleshy color, then as we approach the mid-ground, the darker red brick color, still not the fully saturated orangey one. the little rock ground by touching your small brush to the canvas, just tapping slightly, leaving the dark of the rocks and some of their highlights on the canvas. Then we block in the mid-ground with a desaturated red brick color in the light, blending in some lighter highlights to the left of the mound where the sun is shining from. Always keep in mind the light source, in this case the upper left, and add your highlights and shadows accordingly. Add the shadows to horizontal rock textures and layers, and you can use your palette knife to add more texture if you wish. You can go back and forth, you should go back and forth adding highlights, shadows, taking care not to blend them too much. For this, a small brush is very helpful. The foreground is the most satisfying to do. It's pretty flat, with the exception of some hills and valleys, and you can achieve the sense of earth movement by color and value. Add some darker color to create the hills and the shadows. Then dilute some of your brown paint, add a little black and with a stiff flat brush 
or even better a toothbrush loaded with a loose dark paint, flick it toward the canvas aiming at the foreground and make sure that you don't have anything precious behind the canvas or around it or it may get painted on. Then add some dark rocks with the brush or the palette knife, then highlights and drag some shadows right under and to the right of the rocks. And there you have it, a canyon landscape painting that anyone can paint in just a few hours. And if you want to see the step-by-step -step full painting that I did during my live stream a few weeks ago, check out the card above or the link in the description where you can find some other helpful resources for the genius artist like you. I hope this video was helpful and you are smarter than 15 minutes ago. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff and I'll see you in the next one. Trust the flow, my friend.